Right everyone, good morning. I am going to use this video to give you my perception on what is actually going on at the moment. So I'm going to tell you how I see it. So this is using simply my own eyes and my own ears with no uh, influence or input whatsoever from what anybody else is saying, whether that's around me or media. <clears throat> Not that I consume any mainstream media. Uh, but things like Telegram groups as well, uh, and WhatsApp groups and different, uh, you know, that, that movement that many of us are all part of. Because I think it's so important to, for us to remember, if we want to see how a society is behaving, we need to look at ourselves. We need to notice how people are behaving with our own eyes and ears, and we can do that. It's uh, <clears throat> Our primary source of evidence is what we see and hear ourselves, not what other people are telling us is happening. And the reason I'm saying this is because I've remarked in a couple of other videos about how I've noticed. To sum up, I think that the general mood amongst the awakened movement is more pessimistic than it should be. And I'm going to try and explain why in this video. Obviously, this is just my perception. And you're welcome to agree or disagree with it because what i see in here may not be what you see in here but let's uh let's go for it anyway so in the last few weeks i've done quite a bit of traveling around the uk i've been obviously i've done loads of walks around my local area lots of different walks and that is just getting out getting out your own house and the guard dogs are barking at me. wouldn't argue with them would you bloody hell anyway just getting out of your own house and interacting is a, is, a, is a great start, isn't it? And I know that's what many, many of us do. Um, and it's the ones who don't do that who are tending to fall for all this bullshit. <clears throat> but I've been to Edinburgh, a long train journey to Edinburgh. Uh, I spent quite a bit of time in Edinburgh. Uh, I spent quite a bit of time down in the Peak District. Uh, we drove down there a couple of weeks ago and we drove around lots of little towns and villages, we spent a few days there. Um, I went for a day out to Lytham and Blackpool the other day. So again, another train journey. So I've been on lots of trains, public transport. I've been in loads of pubs, too many pubs, a few restaurants, seen lots of different environments and different places. And I like to do this because I feel that you start getting a feel for where society's at because you're seeing so many different people in so many different settings. It is abundantly clear to me. And let me say again that this is, my channel primarily is about where society's at. I like to look at human behavior. I like to try and distill the zeitgeist of the times. I like to try to understand what our causes if any are, what our unifying truth can be. What is it that got us here? Where are we and where do we want to go? I don't so much discuss the problem that we're facing rather than try and remind people that the onus on solving those problems is for us to place an, em an emphasis on the individual in society and for us all to remember that as individuals, we must take that responsibility. So that's where I'm coming out with this. Now it's abundantly clear that we're in a better place with regard to people having their eyes open than even a month ago, let alone six months ago. I'm seeing a, well, it, well, let me put it this way. It's great to see that many more people are using their exemptions from mask wearing because they should have been doing that at the start. You think about how many people, how many people there are in this country who are suffering from chronic respiratory conditions, asthma, anxiety, things like that. So it's great that they're using their exemptions now. And they should have been doing that a long time ago. So what does that mean? Well, there's many more people who aren't wearing masks now. I'd say it's gone up from 1% to between 5 and 10%, sometimes more. That's a significant increase. It's still not enough, but it's a significant increase. And I'm wondering, is this, are we on some kind of exponential curve with this? Where first of all, progress is painfully slow. And then all of a sudden, because what this relies on is social proof. 
People need social proof that what they want to do, others are already doing it. Which is why those early trailblazers, all those months ago, well, a year, over a year ago, um, were so incredibly important. The ones who took, the ones who took the stand, who were prepared to say, right, okay, I'm going to be, I'm going to be the leader here. And slowly but surely, people are looking around and they're saying, well, they're doing it, so it must be okay. And yes, it shouldn't be like that, but that's just the nature of, of, of uh, that's the nature of human nature. So, that's good. The general social distancing, no one does it. No one does it. Um, simple as, no one does it. The general mood, um, I think, there's been points through the last year where a lot of us have said, surely this will be the moment and the sheep wake up, surely this, surely now, they, they must, surely they're going to cotton onto it now. I think seeing the images from that G7 conference, which was just one big massive piss take, wasn't it? Let's be honest, they don't even make any effort to hide how much disdain they have, how much contempt they have. We are mere cattle who should live our lives according to a completely different set of rules than them. <clears throat> well, there was no social distance in there. There were masks for the cameras, weren't there? Once they thought the cameras were off, or slapping, slapping each other's backs, hugging each other, no masks. Where was the quarantine? Why were they allowed to fly in when we can't go anywhere? Bunch of fucking hypocrites. And our people can't see through that now, but they are. That's the crucial thing. And again, the, uh, the latest lockdown delay, which we knew was going to happen. It was so obvious. Just written according to the script. People are rightly now questioning. Well, I've done everything. I've done the social distancing. I've done the lockdown for 16 months. I've worn the mask. I've had my two jabs. So they're quite rightly, very naively, yeah. But now they're quite rightly saying I've done my bit. Now, of course, what they still don't understand is that they should never have done any of that, but that doesn't matter. Quite rightly asking, I've done my bit, and yet still it's not enough. They're looking at the statistics. They're looking at things just don't add up. And they're quite rightly asking questions. So it's going to be interesting come 21st of June. How much, uh, <clears throat> how much impact that's going to have with regards to those numbers who aren't wearing face masks. You know, because those numbers who are, who are, who are openly, openly going to say, this is over now because this was the date we were told, Freedom Day and all that. I mean, every day is Freedom Day, isn't it? But that's not what the propaganda is around this, isn't it? June the 21st was Freedom Day, now it's July the 19th. Now there's something else incredibly important, and this is where I have to be careful what I say, and this is why I hate it sometimes, because I can't say what I really want to say, because I'll get censored. I've already had two strikes. And the thought of losing all my subscribers and not being able to communicate with, with you all is horrendous after I've worked so hard to build it up. And if you've all taken the time to interact with me and to provide valuable feedback and to connect. So I have to be very careful, but let me try and put it, put it like this. There's something that's happened that is happening now that is shocking people and people are asking questions. They're wondering why a solution or an alleged solution to an alleged problem, and I use the word alleged, it all underlined and in bold, appears to be providing many more problems, why the solution appears to be doing more harm than the problem. And I'm pretty sure now that everybody knows at least a couple of people who have suffered as a result of going to take part in the solution. Now, do you know what I'm talking about? Horrendous things going on that cannot be ignored, that are be being ignored by the authorities, but they cannot and are not now being ignored by the general public. 
as conspiracy theory in the minds of the masses who've been duped turns into a conspiracy fact because let's not forget conspiracy is this a conspiracy yes is it true what's happening yeah yes have many of the things that the conspiracy theorists said come true? Yes, they have. All these things, I still hope you can hear me, all these things are starting to add up. And they're translating into people's behaviour. And people now, quite clearly, I really hope you can hear me with this breeze, Quite, quite clearly a pining for what they once had and I think they're desperate to get it back and more open to reviewing and reflecting on what they've done or not done in the last year they're more open to considering the opinions of those who've tried to draw their attention and they're more open to realising that what they were told isn't necessarily what's happened. So, this is all positive because something that's not being considered enough, as far as I'm concerned, is that what the people of the world have been subjected to have been subjected to uh, uh, expertly orchestrated and highly organised and relentless programme of social change and mass indoctrination. The opposition to that was small at first. The opposition is now, now large, but frag fragmented. And I know that they are the frustrations of many people, me included, that our opposition isn't as organised, isn't unified to what they're doing. But here is the crucial thing to remember. Don't forget all the people who we don't know, who may not be part of any formal movement, who are doing their bit. Because all that ever needed to happen was what is called mass civil disobedience. People to disobey. And that's exactly what's starting to happen. So possibly this doesn't need to be so orchestrated. Maybe it's spontaneously happening by itself. And I say maybe, I think it is. That's my perception. And I think the combination of those two factors, the more organised groups, I know there's no one tangible figurehead to coalesce around, and, but those, those groups, the people, you know, who've put their reputations on the line, put their lives on the line, put their sanity on the line to organise these, these groups to oppose what's being done are incredibly important but we're supplemented we're supplemented and the people who are starting to just do their bit anyway they don't necessarily need, feel like they need to be part, part of, a, of, a, of a, a mass movement still critically important don't underestimate the power of a spontaneous not uprising spontaneous civil disobedience that's what i see on the flip side there are some who is going to who are digging their heels in even more. I would suggest primarily not because they're afraid of anything, because they don't want to entertain the notion that they were wrong. What is it Mark Twain said? It is easy to fool someone than to convince them that they've been fooled. So anyone who comes to the conclusion that they have been fooled, for me, is a strong character. And anyone who's completely unwilling to entertain that notion is the opposite. So there are some who are digging their heels in, we can't do anything about them. <clears throat> but they're smaller in number and fear I think people are starting to realise I really do maybe still not the majority but a sizeable and powerful minority that may soon translate into a majority people are starting to realise that sometimes the price that you have to pay for dealing with a threat which as you know in, you know, in my opinion when set against the uh, the context of all other threats that human civilizations have faced throughout the eons is a very minor threat. But nevertheless, it was it was it was a threat. People are realizing now 
at some times. I want Trump said it, didn't he? The cure is worse than the disease. I think that's impossible to deny now. Impossible. And people are learning that a life lived in fear, a life lived to feel safe, a life lived taking no risk, is not a life to be lived at all. That's a nightmare existence. And that's what's slowly dawning on people. Apart from, I say, the ones who are just going to dig their heels in because their uh, ego, simply their egos, they'd rather, they'd rather go to hell than admit they were wrong. Um, <clears throat> so, we also have the, uh, the new channel, the GB News channel. Now, uh, you know, I'm sceptical about that. However, I've seen some of the coverage on there. And whilst that may not be fully on the side of truth, there's certainly more truth on that news outlet than there is in any other from the mainstream media. And if that's impactful, that is going to, again, give people that, that kind of confidence to challenge what it is they're being told by other media outlets and by governments as well. It'll start to open their minds. The counter-revolution is well underway. How it will play out, I don't know. We can't predict the future. I can't say whether it's going to lead to mass suffering when the scales fall from enough people's eyes and they realise the level of corruption that is in this world. I don't know how it's going to play out. What I will say, though, is we have to do what we have to do. This world is corrupt to the core. We need to go through this process. And I think that's what people are realising. Fingers crossed, there can be a peaceful transition to something better. But it's going to be messy. It's going to be traumatic. It's going to be upsetting. But it needs to happen if we're ever going to we're ever going to create a better world and it is happening so keep the faith everyone and just keep doing hello dog keep doing what you're doing keep working on people keep trying to open their eyes if you just wake up one person imagine if we all just woke up one more person that'd probably be what another million two million three million five million people waking up keep working on people what you're doing is absolutely critical. And please do let me know what you think of uh, what I've said in this video. And uh, I'd appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Okay, I'll speak to you all soon. Bye, everyone.